I've been seeing a lot of buzz recently on a new plugin for Premiere Pro called AutoPod, and this is supposed to automatically create multicam sequences for things like video podcasts and shows. I'm gonna reference it to past projects of mine and see how it does. This is me and Stefan Casado of Not Another Cooking Show. My top layer is the master shot. My middle shot should be me. And then my bottom shot is Stefan. And I do have a clean feed of both of our microphones on these two tracks. Now, if we go to Autopod multi-camera editor, this is the window that popped up. A1 is Javier, A2 is Stefan. And ooh, V3 is all speakers. So that's another way to show it's the master shot. I wanna switch this to Javier and this to Stefan. Let's just hit create multi-cam edit and see if it works. All video tracks must start on frame zero. This is great. It's giving you feedback as to what it needs in order for it to work correctly. I'm going to make a couple adjustments to make sure that I can get this right. So. To begin with, we want it to all start on zero. So I'm going to highlight all of this, move it to zero, zero. And now I'm going to nest this clip. I'm going to come over here and make sure that all of my clips at the end kind of end at the same spot. If I go to create multicam edit, let me see what we get now. It says encoding test, estimated time remaining. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. It did mute my A2 track, which that is one of the speakers. Oh, it's encoding. Okay. So it was encoding the first track, which was me. And now it's looking at the second track, which is Stefan. I'm really excited right now. I, I want this to work. I want this to work so bad. No way. I mean, it's creating my edits right now on the, and I can, I can, I can zoom in and zoom out as it's going. Um, what? This is, this is insane. There's no humanly possible way for me to create cuts as fast as the computer is doing right now. I haven't looked back at the results yet, but I cut and edited and recorded far over a hundred podcasts in my day. It would probably way more than that. I released of my own podcast around 90 plus podcasts. And then I also did podcasts for other people before I even got into doing my own podcast. Editing a podcast is a whole day ordeal or used to be just choosing the camera angles and everything. And this is, this is, <laughs> my mind is blown right now. So at the end, it gave me a pop-up window saying Autopod multi-camera editor has successfully completed. I hit OK. They, I stopped getting that bar at the bottom. And let me just move this over here. Let me go to a different section. So I would go through and reframe this, but for right now, I'm not going to do that. Um, in terms of creation, a reflective period. Yeah. Um, I feel wow. So look at this. He's saying something. I have a reaction to it, and it precursors my reaction by a couple frames. So that's... Um, about, about 10 frames. It's, it looks about nine period. Um, I sort of come, I have my reaction. I say, yeah, I, I nod my head and then it cuts directly back to the guest. That's right. So perfect that, timing, perfect timing. And all, so now my whole life is. Just from initial reaction of seeing the potential or not even the potential, just like, this is what the product is. Did I am blown away. I am completely blown away. It just cuts an hour in 35 minutes of material. It, it just did it for me. And, and by cut, I mean, it, it went through and created a pass of what cameras to use unbelievable great times great times to be a podcast editor you could literally crank out your podcast in the time it would take you to like listen to the podcast here's another example that i want to try the enable and disable feature 
This is one of my most downloaded podcasts from the past. This is with the Buttery Bros with Heber Cannon and Marston Sawyers. I'm going to create wide one. I'll nest this and call it me or Javier. So here is Heber and there is Marston. Now go back up to my window extensions and multi-camera. Let's do enable, disable. Let's go high on the multi-shot frequency. I have three speakers with four cameras. It's A1, which is this audio, is Heber. A2 is Marston. And A3 is me. V1 is Marston, as I see right here. In fact, I'll bring this down over here. Um, V2, which this is V2, is Heber. V3 is me, so Javier, and V4 is, oh wow, look at that. This is so cool. It knows that since I have four cameras, it's asking, is this a master on both of them? Is this a master on all three of us? Is this just two different speakers? Like if I had a camera on just Marston and myself, if the angles were set up differently, that's so cool. Even though I'm in this shot, I'm going to label this as kind of just Heber and Marston. So right here we have Heber and Marston. The differences here is now I have four cameras. I'm doing the enable, disable, and the multi-shot frequency is high. I don't know if I would actually do that during the podcast, but I just want to see it so I can understand how it looks. I'll go in and create multi-edits. And at this point, since I have an idea of what it does, I'm probably going to speed through this so you can see the end result. With the enable and disable feature, instead of completely cutting out the footage, it just disables the footage. In this section, you can tell that Heber is telling a certain story and it's just switching between the two. You can also tell that Marston is kind of checking his phone during this. So what I would probably do is unenable that and then turn on Heber's camera for a longer period of time. I do believe that this is a tool that will speed up the process of editing video podcasts immensely, but I do think it's still the responsibility of an editor at this point in time to at least watch back your footage and trim up and cut out anything that doesn't need to be there. So like right here, instead of showing Marston on his phone, I would unenable this and then enable Heber's camera throughout. And here we have a bunch of uh, cuts going on. So let me see what's going on there. From brands and stuff like that. Yeah, the, I'm bringing back up Sarah. I loved how you guys brought in the, the drink and then you did the little pan across <laughs> when you're like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask. So one of the things I did select high, I do think changing of uh, the edits right there is a little bit too much. And that's completely fine because I did choose high on the frequency. I think if I were to do this again, I would go with medium or maybe even low. I am curious as to the other things that you do get with your autopod. So if I go over here to window extensions, there are two other options, social clip creator and autopod jump cut editor. So now I'm looking at the jump cut editor. Again, I haven't looked up any information on this. I'm just assuming that it'll create jump cuts. And I wanna see what it does to jump cut this to get rid of those silent parts, just to give me an initial uh, run through of my audio. So right now it says the silent DB cutoff is 50 decibels. So if I create jump cuts, wow. Wow, Autopod Jump Cut Editor has completed. <laughs> Look at how quick it made those jump cuts. And I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye. So it cut off um, living a life of abundance. Uh, I want, I would want that to come through right there. Abundance. Bye. I would want the Silence DB cutoff to be much higher. So if I hit undo, let's see what happens. You would have to hit undo a bunch of times. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bring back in the file and I raised it by 20 dB, create jump cuts. Oop. I like the clip, create jump cuts. Oh, oh wait, maybe it's because my dB cutoff is so high. 
So let me go down to 60, see what happens. Okay, my dB cutoff was too high and it didn't make any cuts because the threshold was set, um, or I guess too low in this case. So let me see how my abundance comes across right here. Ladies, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye. That's great. Yeah, that there got what I needed it to. Until next time, if this video was helpful, and if this video was helpful, so it would need some tweaking depending on your clips and where your audio is, but that, that's pretty good. Now, let me try the third plugin that you get. It's the Automatic Social Clip Creator. I have this clip of Nick Ivey talking about hydro dipping. So we have the option to make it 1920 by 1080, 1080 by 1350, which is that four by five and 1080 by 1920, which is nine by 16 or vertical video. So I want to create a vertical video from this and uh, I want to auto reframe it and the end page. So if I click end page, that just gives me the ability to load in an, a file for my end page. But for right now, I'm not going to do that. I could also watermark it. Again, you could put that file in as a watermark. End page offset, I'm not sure what that does. So let me just see what I have, if I have anything that I can put in here. Social. Um, what is this? Oh, hey. Uh, let's have that be my end page. So I'm do this one as my end page and do an end page offset of three, maybe? Let's see what three does. And I just hit create clips. Oh, wow. Okay, so the offset is how much it brings in that clip. So right here, header dipping. Like, what is header dipping? It, it is auto-reframed already. And this end page would have fit if I made it 1080 by 1920, but it did put the end page in there. It offset it by three. So I'm assuming that's three seconds. Let me look here. What's our, yeah, three seconds. And then you could export them upon creating them. But if I were doing this in a real world situation, I would probably just use this to create the sequences. That way I could then add subtitles, graphics, B-roll, and other things to make the social post more interesting than just a one person on camera talking. If you are a podcast editor using Premiere Pro, I think at least trying Autopod is a no brainer. See if it goes with your workflow. The multi-camera editor I think is the most powerful tool for saving time. Um, the jump cut editor, I think that's really project to project and I think the social clip creator is if you want to hit the ground running with a nice base of whoever's talking auto reframed already have the sequence settings where they need to be for the different aspect ratios then I think that is a great plugin as well but I think the star of the show is the multi-camera editor wow what a plugin. If you are interested in it, I'll put a link in the description. I was able to download mine for free for a certain trial period, and then they do a monthly subscription as of the time of this upload. I think it's at least worth trying it out. Again, if you are a podcast editor and you haven't tried it out, please give it a go with some of your footage that you work on. And let me know in the comments what you think. Until next time, my name is Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.